I'm a female and I live with a disability. So I've kind of got both those things going right now that both are fights that are happening in our society. Swimming was my way to move past that. It was my way to feel connected to the life before my injury while also leading me to a future. To be able to be a woman in sport in today's day and age, it's empowering because we get to utilize that platform of sport to spark a conversation that transcends our field of play. There are young girls that are coming up behind us that are watching what we do. I think that's given me a lot of fire in my belly as I go towards Tokyo 2020. My name is Mallory Wegman, and I am a Paralympic gold and bronze medalist and two-time Paralympian. The conversation we're having as women in sports is no different than the conversation that's being had for women in business and in the workforce. The difference there is sport unifies us in ways that so many other things don't. I grew up in Minnesota and I started swimming when I was seven years old. Competed in high school all four years, swam varsity and was captain senior year. And then after high school graduation is when my journey with the sport kind of took a shift following my paralysis. It was a very freak thing that happened. I literally walked into a clinic one day to get what was supposed to be my third and final epidural injection for back pain, and I simply never walked out. And, you know, I was awake for the procedure. I remember everything about it down to the second that I was paralyzed. It was seven months after high school graduation and two months before my 19th birthday. I was already trying to figure out who I was, what I wanted to do with life and everything that I knew changed. I'll never forget the first time that I got to go kind of out on a pass from the hospital. I felt like a deer in headlights. I felt so incredibly uncomfortable in my own skin. I felt like everybody was staring at me. The biggest thing I struggled with was in the entire afternoon at the Mall of America, which is a melting pot of individuals, I didn't see a single person I saw myself in. And I learned very quickly that that was my new norm. I could go into building after building, room after room, and I may not see somebody that looks like me. Coming out of that, I think for me, the biggest thing I realized was I can waste a lifetime being angry, or I can choose to forgive, and I can live a lifetime. Okay, I know I love you too. You're such a good I got boy. home from the hospital after about five weeks. So I went to join my sister for breakfast and she was reading our local paper, The Star Trip, in the Twin Cities. And in the paper, there was an article about the Paralympic trials for the 2008 Beijing Games for swimming. In that moment was the very first time we heard of the Paralympic movement. Decided that maybe we should go check, check it out that night. I was incredibly anxious about going back down the memory lane of last time I was there. And last time I'd been there, I was walking and my life looked vastly different. So I always joke that families that love you, they also push you, and they push you a lot. And that day my family pushed, and they pushed hard. And when we got to the University of Minnesota that night, I remember we got in the first set of doors, and that rush of chlorine that hits when you get to a pool, and that smell, it hit us that night. And it was in that moment that I started to feel calm. And I looked over to my sister and I said, how cool would it be if in four years I could be here? And that's always been kind of marked as the day that that dream started to be born. Getting into the water and now having a different body and dealing with learning how to balance my body from a buoyancy standpoint in the water, but then also propel myself without that kick that I had relied on for so long, it was, it was different. It was challenging. It was, at times, incredibly frustrating. But at the same time, it was also kind of liberating. I slowly found my way to move forward. I found my way to start forgiving. I found my way to stop asking why me and looking instead at what the possibilities could be in the future. And so, for me, a lot of that healing, though, took place in the water. Relearning how to swim taught me how to relearn how to live. Hi, 
I think representation is such a huge part of how we find our path forward. It's really, really hard to become what you can't see. Disability is often not talked about. It's not something we bring up when we're talking about diversity and inclusion. It's not something you see in our mainstream media. And when you when you tie the, you know, women and individuals with disability conversation together, I think it just elevates that importance. Three months after Mallory was paralyzed at 18, she was back in the water. Four years later, she had sets 15 world records, 33 American records, um, incredible achievements. Uh, she has become an active disability advocate and public speaker. So I would like to ask you to join me in welcoming her to the stage. For women having role models, having mentors who they can look up to is incredibly important. After returning to the pool in April of 2008, I became addicted to swimming. Everything was centered around it. 14 months after my paralysis, I made our U.S. national team for the first time. And I went on in August of 2009, just a year and a half after my paralysis, to break my first three world records. From there, my career, in all honesty, took a life of its own. I was out in New York for some media and the hotel room that I was staying in, the accessible shower bench in the hotel room came unscrewed from the wall halfway through my shower. And I came down on my left arm and uh, suffered permanent nerve damage to it. My arm injury has been tenfold to what my paralysis ever was for me mentally and emotionally. I contemplated retiring. I thought about hanging the suit up, calling it a day, moving on to that next chapter and my boyfriend at the time, now husband, he knew how badly I wanted Rio. And he kind of kept that dream alive when I couldn't. So I'm now on, on my way to Tokyo. I'm ranked number one in the world in the 50 fly as of right now. And I don't plan on stopping until I'm atop the podium again. I think that it's especially important as a woman in sport who happens to be a Paralympic athlete because there's also the disability conversation that's coming into play as well. And those are two really powerful conversations that we need to have. I started building my career outside of the pool. I began getting really laser focused on my speaking career. I began kind of immersing myself more in the advocacy world. And you know, I still, as a speaker even, have days where I, I'll go into room after room after room and I am the only individual with a disability that you can see visually. We need to find a way to make sure there's that representation because there's young girls and boys all over the country and world that are growing up that look a little bit different than your average person, whatever that even means anymore, and they need to see a path forward. I would love nothing more than to use every bit of my voice and platform to be able to help guide that conversation and be a part of that conversation because I want to make sure that in 10, 15, 20 years, the Mallory back of 2008 doesn't have to sit and go to a mall and feel like she doesn't see anybody that looks like her. I want our community to be diverse and inclusive of everybody that makes it up. Hi everyone, I'm Sari, the producer of Her Stories. Click here to watch more episodes, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment letting us know what other people and topics you want to see on the show. And make sure to subscribe to Now This Her. Thanks for watching.